Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us again. Going to have a conversation with Dr. Gary Lelly. He's uh, joining us to talk about an initiative created to help those living with Graves' disease. Welcome to the program, Dr. Gary Lelly. Thanks so much, Neil. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, give our listeners a little insight into your backgrounds and uh, talk about where it is that you, you practice. Sure. I am an oculoplastic surgeon. Uh, I practice in New York City at Wow Cornell Medical College and New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, oculoplastics is a, a field that many people don't know about, but it's a subspecialty through ophthalmology uh, with two years of extra training. And we basically deal with diseases of the orbit, the eyelids, and the lacrimal system. Mm-hmm. And so one of those main diseases that we deal with, uh, which we'll, I'm sure, talk about is, is thyroid eye disease. Uh, uh, and that's an orbital disease that can occur in many, uh, many patients with Graves' disease. Mm-hmm. So how, how does one know that they've got uh, thyroid eye disease? So they're at risk if they have uh, Graves' disease. Um, and so step one really is, you know, patients who have Graves' disease, mm-hmm. um, which is an autoimmune disease, up, up to half of them could develop thyroid eye disease. And the, the best way for them to know is to be mindful of their eyes. Uh, to to be mindful of changes either with the way the eyes look, Mm -hmm. um, they may appear more bulging, or the way they feel. They may feel dry or irritated, or they may be uh, getting red uh, or inflamed. And those are all uh, potential signs that a patient has thyroid eye disease. Now, is it uh, often misdiagnosed as some other related uh, condition of Graves'? It can be. Um, So the most common uh, misdiagnosis would probably be dry eyes or allergic conjunctivitis, uh, simply because many times the patients present with those symptoms. The eyes are red, they're irritated, they may have foreign body sensation or light sensitivity, and dry eyes and allergies in the eyes is both really common diagnoses. But there are things that eye professionals can look for Mm -hmm. to make the diagnosis of thyroid eye disease, um, things like eyelid retraction, um, lack of phthalmos, meaning the eyes don't close all the way, proptosis, if the, if the eyes are actually protruding from the eye socket. And so, you know, one thing um, that we recommend uh, at our institution is when a patient's diagnosed with Graves' disease, they're typically seeing their endocrinologist or their primary care doctor. We almost like a reflex action that they need to then see the ophthalmologist and in our institution in particular, an oculoplastic specialist, just to be screened for thyroid eye disease. Because as I mentioned, you know, up to half of those patients with grades could have those signs of thyroid eye disease. And sometimes they're very subtle and sometimes they're quite obvious. So we like to just baseline evaluate all of them. Is it... Uh... Is it a guarantee that someone with Graves is going to develop uh, TED at some point? No, that's not true. Um, so, uh, you know, depending on what studies you look at, somewhere between 20 and 50 percent of patients with Graves will develop uh, thyroid eye disease. Um, so many, many of them don't uh, develop those, those sequelae. Um, but we like to get a baseline on them because they're at risk, uh, at higher risk than the general population for the rest of their lives. Now, when it comes to uh, recognizing these symptoms, I mean, you know, they, they can be misdiagnosed. Talk about how someone living with Graves' disease can identify some of these symptoms, separate them from some of the others that look similar. Sure. I think the, the best way and the way that patients most frequently identify um, uh, thyroid eye disease in themselves is based on a change in appearance of the eyes. Um, so the eyes will look either more wide open um, and oftentimes they're noticing this, you know, with our, you know, current sort of selfie uh, mentality uh, with everybody on their iPhones, you know, they're noticing it in pictures that they're taking. Mm-hmm. And so that their eyes either look more wide open, mm-hmm. they look um, like they're bulging, they may look asymmetric, you know, one side uh, looks different than the other and it's different than they looked before. Um, those are the most common ways they're going to notice it. I would say the second thing that sometimes patients will notice And this can occur in about half of patients with thyroid eye disease is they'll start to develop double vision. They'll see two images instead of one um, when they're looking out of both eyes. And that's because the inflammatory cascade that occurs affects the extraocular muscles behind the eye, causes inflammation in those muscles. And in about up to half of these patients with thyroid eye disease, the eyes then don't align correctly in certain fields of gaze. And they see two images instead of one, which is 
quite functionally disabling for the patients, and they notice that right away, uh, that something, something's off with their vision, and, and they usually are very quick to get an eye evaluation if that is their um, presenting symptom. Now, this can lead to blindness if untreated. Is that correct? True, true. And it's, it's severe forms. It can lead to blindness. Um, uh, thankfully, that's about uh, somewhere between 3 and 6% of patients with mm-hmm. thyroid eye disease that have this severe form. Mm-hmm. Um, and what can happen is uh, patients can develop compressive optic neuropathy. So basically, uh. those extraocular muscles that swell behind the eye, mm-hmm. it's a closed space in the orbit. It's surrounded by bones. There's, there's not anywhere else for that swelling to go other than to press on the optic nerve at the back portion of the orbit, and that can cause uh, temporary and permanent vision loss um, in these patients, So they, especially the severe ones. But <clears throat> again, that's why we like to have all these patients being followed need treatment um, so that we can try to prevent uh, you know, that devastating uh, consequence. Now, there is a, a, an initiative that's been created. Is it a, a patient focused initiative or practitioner focused initiative to identify these patients or is it something that um, helps patients identify these symptoms as I said themselves or, or a combination of the two let's talk about this initiative right yeah you're you're referring to the the focus initiative which um, was launched by uh, horizon therapeutics in combination with uh, prevent blindness mm-hmm. and um, I, I think it's a combination of the two it's really to try to raise awareness uh, that patients with Graves' disease um, need to be mindful of their eyes, mm-hmm. look for the symptoms, but also to remind healthcare providers, uh, in particular those not like me who, who sees these patients all the time, but maybe a primary care doctor or an endocrinologist, when you diagnose a patient with Graves' disease, not to forget that, that you have to think about their eyes, talk to them about their eyes. Mm-hmm. July happens to be Graves' Disease Awareness Month, so this is the month we're trying to get the word out. Uh, to, to patients and to providers, frontline providers, um, that, that Graves patients uh, need to be mindful or focused uh, on their eyes. Is there an underlying reason uh, that you think may um, prevent uh, people with Graves disease from um, talking with their practitioners about what's going on with their eyes? Or is it something maybe they think it's normal for Graves disease and they, they're not sure that this is something uh, other than what they they uh, originally had, um, you know, I think the most I think the most common reason that that it's not discussed is because in many patients the initial findings are really subtle mm-hmm. and um, it can be missed. Um, the the more um, moderate or severe patients with this disease, I think they're discussing it because they're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're experiencing vision changes. Uh, they're experiencing appearance changes. They may be experiencing double vision, um, and that's causing them to struggle with work or daily function. So for the moderate and severe patients, I don't think it's, it's really something that people don't talk about. Mm-hmm. But I think um, in these patients who are just being diagnosed and maybe four months from now are going to develop moderate disease, we want to see them before then. We yeah. want to see them get that baseline, understand if they are progressing in the disease and getting worse, what's the acuity of that uh, change? Because patients, we know patients that change rather quickly um, also are more likely to have more severe sequelae of the disease. So I think it's just the subtle ones that, that are kind of being sometimes passed over and we're trying to change that. Where can our listeners get some more information online about uh, Graves disease, about TED, and a little bit more about the uh, Focus Initiative? Right. Great, great question. Uh, you know, patients need to have access to information and especially need to have access to physicians who can screen them uh, for this disease and, and, and treat them if they have it. And a website's been established. It's teddoctors.com, uh, T-E-D, doctors.com where patients can go uh, search by their zip code and by a radius uh, to find providers um, like myself who who take care of this disease uh, on a daily basis. Um, There are also uh, um, on the Horizon Therapeutics website, if you go to their website, they have uh, very helpful uh, patient information on uh, thyroid eye disease. And also the uh, American Society of Ophthalmic Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, ASOPRS, uh, website has uh, helpful uh, links about thyroid eye disease. So those are a few 
um, places they can go. But really, finding the specialist, I think, is key for anybody who's had Graves' disease or has Graves' disease. Go to teddoctors.com, find a specialist in your area, and just get an evaluation. Well, Dr. Lely, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Thanks so much, Neil. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.